Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. We begin with a tribute to some everyday heroes. Montgomery County Executive Isaiah Leggett, County Council Member Phil Andrews, and Fire Chief Stephen Lohr recently honored these everyday heroes, ordinary people who took extraordinary actions to save lives and help others. Michael Bruin reports. In a recent ceremony in Rockville, five individuals were recognized as everyday heroes for their roles in intervening in a medical emergency and rendering help until rescue personnel could arrive on the scene. Two security officers at the Rockville campus of Montgomery College, Yasmel Rodriguez and Jeff Wilson, responded to an unconscious student. They immediately administered CPR and probably saved her life. Walter Lopez rescued a severely bleeding woman trapped in her car after a tree fell on it during the derecho storm. And Uniformed Services University Ensign John Hunt and 2nd Lieutenant Wells Weymouth used their belts in an attempt to stop a man's leg from bleeding when a vehicle drove through the front of a Gaithersburg Sam's Club store. And despite the fact that we've made extraordinary steps in reducing response time, uh, we cannot be there every second, every minute to provide the crucial services that are needed at the time when it is most, most necessary. The fact that we have uh, citizens in Montgomery County, ordinary citizens, who step forward to close that gap and to respond in times of challenges, I think is really remarkable. And I want to congratulate you and thank you for that. Uh, it is a real honor to represent the council today and to congratulate and to thank uh, the heroes uh, that are in our midst uh, this morning who step forward uh, beyond uh, any uh, responsibility that they had uh, in an official capacity to help save lives. So I want to thank you for what you have done uh, for our community uh, because we rely on individuals, as was noted, our uh, excellent uh, fire and rescue officers and police officers cannot be everywhere all the time. We were actually just about to walk out the Sam's Club and we heard this explosion behind us and uh, assessed the situation very quickly, saw that there were some injured people and immediately ran over to, uh, to do our best to try to stabilize them. Montgomery County Executive Isaiah Leggett and Catherine Leggett hosted the 12th Annual County Executive's Excellence in the Arts and Humanities Awards Program held at the Cultural Arts Center at Montgomery College this week. The Leggetts presented awards to several extraordinary individuals and organizations that are making a difference in Montgomery County through the arts and humanities. Catherine and I are honored to recognize our eight honorees. These individuals have made remarkable contributions to advance the arts and humanities in Montgomery County. They truly deserve our praise and admiration. Each of these honorees, in one way or the other, has made the arts and humanities a lifelong passion. Without their tireless energy, dedication, and devotion, Montgomery County would not be the cultural hotspot that it is today. So I just want to thank Ike Leggett, Catherine Leggett, and County Council once again for their unwavering support during good times and more importantly during bad because really we know for a fact as we look at our colleagues and there's 5,000 local arts agencies around the nation, we know that the commitment is strong and deep and we deeply, deeply appreciate it. In addition to the award ceremony, the program featured live performances and grantee recognition. You can find out more about the award recipients by visiting the Arts and Humanities Council's website at creativemoco.com. Superintendent Joshua Starr recently sat down with some of the school system's most important stakeholders, the students, for the first of six student town halls this school year. Here's the story from MCPS TV. Students at Poolsville High School discussed educational issues with Superintendent Joshua Starr at this school year's first student town hall meeting. The event was moderated by Justin Kim, student member of the Board of Education, who also was a student at Poolsville. What's your thoughts and advice on how to help students know when they've reached their limit and enough is enough and they just can't take the stress of the course load? We have all this uh, equipment in our uh, engineering classes. So how is the county working towards getting this equipment to other schools that don't have a magnet program to engage those kids in STEM fields? I was wondering if you have any plans to extend 
uh, special needs programs throughout the county. We don't think about it in terms of programs anymore, frankly, Mitchell. We think about it in terms of services um, and where does the child get those best services, and we're constantly adjusting and readjusting because there's never one answer. After the forum, Dr. Starr reflected on Montgomery County students. So I, I've learned that our students are really thoughtful and serious and smart. I mean, they know so much about the school system. They do their homework about it. They come with great questions. It kind of put it into the whole perspective that we can't just really focus about ourselves and we have to look at the whole county as a whole. I like the questions about um, emotional health and I feel, especially in the Magna program, that's a big concern because people are working really hard. The entire Poolsville High School Town Hall can be viewed on MCPS TV and will be found shortly on the MCPS website at mcpsstudenttownhall.org. The next student town hall is scheduled for November 25th at A. Mario Leuterman Middle School. There's a new community developing in the city of Gaithersburg. It's called Crown, and it's located off Fields Road, right across from the Washingtonian Center. The first Crown residents have already moved into their new homes, and the first business has opened its doors in downtown Crown. And there's a lot more to come. Directly behind us, this two-story building is going to have LA Fitness is taking uh, 30,000 square feet on the ground floor and another 10,000 square feet above. Directly beneath them on the corner here will be Wells Fargo Bank and behind them will be Floyd's Barbershop. Over 50 homes have been sold to date in Crown West and the developer is readying more lots for release to the community's home builders. And you can see lots that we are uh, preparing uh, for the builders and they're basically taking the lots as quickly as they can to begin construction. Residents who call this 182 acre community home can walk to downtown Crown where they'll find a variety of retail shops and restaurants. Starbucks is already open for business and LA Fitness and Harris Teeter will soon follow. Another draw for commuters, the planned Corridor Cities Transit Way. We've actually built uh, the Coverly Drive with an extra wide median for the CCT to come down the middle. The station will be down there to my left as it approaches Fields Road. Until it opens, there'll be a dedicated shuttle running between Crown and the Shady Grove Metro. Other distinct features of this community include an abundance of parks and green space and the unique townhome floor plans builders are offering with outdoor living spaces and rooftop terraces. Even the street names are significant. Crown is about uh, kind of the history of the farmstead. But more importantly, it's about innovation and moving to the next, uh, next generation. So we were trying to be respectful to a lot of the innovators uh, in, in naming the streets. Developers say the community's rapid growth will continue next year as they'll break ground on the community's state-of-the-art community center. The Cadence at Crown will open its leasing office for apartment shoppers. And downtown Crown will celebrate with a formal grand opening in the spring. The Montgomery County Council will hold a second public hearing on proposed changes to the county zoning law at 7.30 p.m. on November 12th and November 14th. The zoning law has not been comprehensively updated since 1977, and the County Planning Board has suggested changes to the law. The council is considering those changes and recommendations of a council committee. You can find information about the proposed new law and the proposed new zoning map online at zoningmontgomery.org. Those interested in testifying at the public hearing next month should call 240-777-7803 by 5 p.m. on November 11th. Sign-ups are already underway and space is limited. Written testimony and comments can also be emailed to council members at county.council at montgomerycountymd.gov. If you can't attend the meeting, you can watch it broadcast live on CCM and streamed live on the web. When we come back, we'll tell you why some local firefighters are going pink. And later, we'll recap the World of Montgomery Festival. Stay with us. County Report This Week is coming right back. There's a reason why area law enforcement are out enforcing pedestrian and traffic safety laws and preventing killer pedestrian crashes. Be alert. Be street smart. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Oh, You should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> 
Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> they want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics, such as clamshells, deli containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. Woohoo! We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Real men do wear pink. In support of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, Montgomery County firefighters are sporting pink. They're taking part in their annual fundraiser for breast cancer research and at the same time making a difference for many. Susan Kennedy reports. Members of Montgomery County's Fire and Rescue Services are on a different mission of sorts this month. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and the fire department is raising money for cancer research and making an impact for the cause by wearing pink. Master firefighter Doug Wallace is leading the effort this year. More flashy. His mother is a breast cancer survivor. Once you guys started wearing the pink, it came out that there were so many of you that, that have been touched by this. Our department is 1,200 uniformed firefighters, and everybody, uh, it didn't matter who we talked to, uh, everybody who wanted to participate, um, if, if it wasn't a family member who had been affected, it was a close friend of theirs, and it just really made sense for us to really push the uh, the International's uh, initiative to do it here in Montgomery County. This year's hot pink shirts are attracting a lot of attention. Even though it's not a color most of the firefighters would choose to wear, Wallace says they tough it out for this worthwhile cause. As soon as we put the pink on, um, whether we're outside washing the fire trucks, people are going by blowing the horn, giving us the thumbs up, or um, it just so happens October is also fire prevention month. So we're in and out of the schools and it's kind of neat to see the little kids pick up on it of what we're doing. And they say, you know, my grandmother had breast cancer, or, but um, the vibrant pink that we wear, the, the people definitely notice. This year's campaign has raised $12,000 that will be donated to the Susan G. Komen Foundation and the Red Devils Charity, a Maryland-based organization whose mission it is to help Maryland breast cancer patients and their families. This is the third year for the Think Pink campaign, and Wallace says it's something the department looks forward to each October. It doesn't take much to make us happy, um, so to be able to not put on the uniform shirt that we're used to and to wear a t-shirt or a sweatshirt uh, that's approved by the fire chief. Um, the guys look forward to it. Um, it sends a message that we want to send out. They let the people know who are actually fighting the disease that we're with them. You know, they're not alone. You know, we're putting the shirts on, trying to help them. In Gaithersburg, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. October is National Fire Prevention Month, and joining us in the studio now to talk about preventing kitchen fires is Assistant Chief Scott Graham from the Montgomery County Fire Department. Chief Graham? One of the most common that we see are people who have left food unattended on the stove. Make sure that there's always someone in a kitchen. You know, the adage of there's too many cooks in the kitchen is really not true. There needs to be somebody around all cooking materials at all times. If you're using a slow cooker or something that's roasting for a long period of time in an oven, set a timer periodically so you can go back and check that product. Also, when you're cooking in the kitchen, make sure you have tight-fitting sleeves. Don't have a robe or a nightgown or a loose-fitting top around the flames. And most importantly, keep about a three-foot safe zone for kids in the kitchen. All of these safety tips can add up to a wonderful experience in the kitchen and a great meal. Avoiding some of these tips can be a recipe for disaster. Thank you, Chief. Halloween is just around the corner, and many people will be out and about after dark. Joining us now to discuss the area's transportation options on this busy night is Tom Pogue from the county's Department of Transportation. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update from Montgomery County. 
Every year, about 400 people are injured in alcohol-related collisions in the county. In 2011, 20 people were killed in such crashes. Did you know Halloween is a celebration marred by one of the highest levels of alcohol-related traffic accidents? If you need a ride home, call Sober Ride at 800-200-TAXI. It's free for up to a $30 fare. Halloween also ushers in the time of year with fewer daylight hours as we turn back the clocks November 3rd. To raise awareness, the regional Street Smart Pedestrian Safety Program recently held a moving event to kick off their fall campaign. Seventy-two members of the Blake High School Marching Band, representing the number of pedestrians and bicyclists killed in the region last year, played a mournful dirge. As a bell tolled, one by one, the band members left the field, eventually leaving a single trumpeter to play taps. Local officials urge motorists, bikers, and walkers to look out for each other. Be safe, be seen. Go to streetsmart.net for more information. We're working to keep you moving safely. From the candy to the costumes, Halloween is a fun time of the year. But it's also important to take some precautions to make sure your celebration is as safe as it is sweet. First, make sure the porch light is on and make sure you clear any debris from your yard that children might trip on, such as flower pots or hoses. And if you're a parent or guardian who has children participating in Halloween, make sure an adult or responsible older sibling goes with them. If you have older children trick-or-treating, make sure they go in a group, carry a cell phone, discuss their route, and when they'll be home. Everyone should carry a flashlight and go to neighborhoods that you're familiar with. And finally, motorists should use extra caution on Halloween night. There'll be a lot of excited children in the neighborhood, and you need to slow down and take your time getting around. So stay safe and have a happy Halloween. Still to come on County Report this week, we'll talk to the Bethesda author of a new best-selling book. And we'll cruise back in time at the Rockville Antique and Classic Car Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County Government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. The co-founder of Honest Tea, Seth Goldman, has co-authored a new book entitled Mission in a Bottle. He talked about his best-selling book and the successful company he founded right here in Montgomery County at a recent small business networking event held at Montgomery Community Media. Now, I promise you the picture wasn't doctored. If the picture was doctored, the label would have been out. <laughs> That's a bottle of honest tea on the president's desk, to the delight of the company's founder, who told his audience, you don't often see presidents with brands. Goldman's story of how he took his Bethesda-based business from five thermoses to millions of bottles a year is the basis of his new best-selling book. It is certainly for entrepreneurs, but it's also for people thinking about how to, if anyone who's passionate about something and wants to understand what it takes to move from idea to execution. Goldman said he wanted to write the book to inspire others and decided to take a different approach to captivate his audience by telling the company's business story as a comic book. Well, if there's something about a visual that makes it so much more engaging, let's think about how to tell a business story that way. And the fact is, so many entrepreneurs are either dyslexic or ADD or just, you know, look at things not the traditional way. Audience members said they were inspired by Goldman as they waited in line to purchase a copy of his book. I was very inspired by the talk. It's such a great honor to actually meet him. He's such a kind and honest person. I think it's fantastic and inspiring. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a book. They ran out of books, but I gave him my card to give me a book later. I sure learned a lot, and I, I work with small business, and I often see small business having the same issues that he had starting their own business. I, th I think this is a great story to share. So what's brewing next for the TEO? 
We're growing. I mean, we're still, I'm still running the company, and we're growing now at a much bigger, uh, to a much larger scale than we were. So there's all kinds of new challenges, new distribution opportunities. We're actually in conversations now with several national restaurant chains. Um, and so that, to me, is part of the next step of how do we take this business from a small <laughs> Bethesda kitchen to, to national scale. The grounds of the historic Glenview Mansion in Rockville were transformed into a scene from the past recently at the city's annual antique and classic car show, one of the largest non-judged car shows in the region. Rockville 11's Morgan Lash has a story. I'm Rock 11 Now's Morgan Lash here with Alice Shellman and her 1953 Jaguar at the city's antique and classic car show. There are over 500 cars here at this annual event. Let's go check some of them out. It's a 1973 VW thing, which was imported into the States for two years, 73 and 74. Um, it's a fun car. You can remove the doors, you can fold the windshield down, and it's fairly rare in the U.S. Yeah, I have a 1950 Ford. It's got the original flathead motor, V8, and three-speed on the column, and uh, I love it. It's like, a, like driving a time machine. It's a 1954 Allard J2X. It's the last car of the series that were built. And it was a very, it dominated road racing in the early 50s in, in the United States. And it went uh, very, very fast. It beat all the Ferraris and all that kind of stuff. I really enjoy the fact that they have British cars this year as a feature. And uh, that's why we were invited to bring us all these bikes. They're all British and they're a really wide variety. So it's fun. Oh, we're very excited. We've been coming to this car show for years, and it's it's really an American car show, and the fact that they decided to honor British cars this year uh, is very, very important, and we, we got a good turnout about our British car fans. I won the People's Choice Award. And how do you feel about winning that? How excited I'm are you? so excited. I had to have Richard drive it to the award ceremony because I was too nervous. <laughs> When I first came in 98, it was the, I was the only Porsche in, in the whole show. And now, you can, if you see it, you'll see there's like a whole row, there must be 20 of them. So I felt like, you know, there's my claim to fame. I'm here because I enjoy it. It's a wonderful show. It's a, a real, I don't know, special thing for the city of Rockville. The county's recreation department is partnering up again with Interfaith Works to bring warmth to needy residents. This year, the goal is to collect more than 500 gently used women's and men's coats of all sizes. Collections will be accepted until November 1st at any of these recreation and swim centers. The coats will be distributed free to needy residents during Homeless Resource Day, which is scheduled for Thursday, November 7th from 9 to 3 at the Activity Center at Boyer Park in Gaithersburg. Coming up on County Report this week, we'll introduce you to our Pet of the Week. And we'll recap the World of Montgomery Festival. Don't go away. County Report this week, and we'll be right back. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Montgomery College and Discovery Communications are presenting a series of panel discussions to assist students with career choices. The first event, November 15th, in the Culture Arts Center on MC's Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus, focuses on careers in the digital media field. Admission is free. Mark your calendars to meet the Montgomery College Raptor on November 19th at the Rockville Campus PE Building. There'll be food, contests, and giveaways. And stick around to cheer on the men's and women's basketball teams as they face Northern Virginia. Congratulations to the members of MC's Tacoma Park Silver Spring Math Club who won the Cumberland Valley Math Modeling Challenge. 
The contest presents teams with a real-world problem and gives them 24 hours to develop and present a solution. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Thousands of residents turned out for the World of Montgomery Festival in Wheaton, which celebrated the county's diverse population and cultural heritages. Montgomery College has the story. Montgomery County is known for its legacy of culture and community, and the World of Montgomery Festival embodies that very tradition. On Sunday, hundreds of people gathered at Wheaton Plaza to celebrate the county's diverse community. A variety of multicultural events were organized into a full afternoon's worth of fun, education, and entertainment for the entire family. The festival is sponsored by Fund for Montgomery, an initiative launched in 2011 to help support community building events such as this. We want to do some kind of major celebration and bring the community together. We probably have 500 volunteers. We have all these young people here. But also, we have some amazing sponsors. We have Montgomery College. We have WSSC. We have some great media partners. And they put up a lot of money. The theme for this year's festival, which was organized by the Kids International Discovery Museum, was the essentials of life with a focus on the four countries with the largest immigrant population in Montgomery County. We're having a parade celebrating all the many, many cultures. So we're featuring four of the largest immigrant populations in Montgomery County, China, India, El Salvador, and Ethiopia. Thanks to the efforts of local community sponsors, event goers of all ages were introduced to these unique cultures. Montgomery College has been one of the most amazing sponsors for this event. They've really stepped up. I mean, it's completely in line with everything Montgomery College is about. It's about celebrating the diversity of our area and the college has been a fabulous supporter of this event. We want to send a message to all these young people how they can be a great citizen of the world in the 21st century. For County Report This Week, I'm James McLean. Have you ever considered adding a bunny to your household? Our pet of the week is a male rabbit who needs a good home. Let's go to Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society for more. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your pet of the week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. And this lovely little guy is Thumper. He's a two-year-old rabbit. He's kind of a small rabbit, but he is very, very nice. And he's very sweet. And he's extremely soft and silky. He's a nice guy. Thumper would like to go home with you. And rabbits make fairly easy pets. They can be litter box trained. They can live in their cage pretty easily. They like to come out and hop around the house a little bit. You do have to be careful. They always have to be monitored because rabbits do like to chew. And they might chew on a little molding, which is not good for you. Or they might chew on your electrical wires, which is really not good for them. So like I said, you do have to monitor them if they are out of their boxes. But they're easy pets, and they're very affectionate. And this guy, as you can see, likes to cuddle. So if you're looking for a really nice little friend, come down to the shelter on Rothgeb Drive, right off of Goody and Rockville, and visit Thumper and all of the other animals we have here. You can get more information at 240-773-5967, or you can visit us on the web at mchumane.org and see all of the many fine pets we have here available for you. Autumn is officially here, so let's go to Brookside Gardens for some tips. To rake or not to rake? Oh, hi. I'm Phil Normandy, Plant Collections Manager here at Brookside Gardens in Wheaton, Maryland. Fall's here, and you know what that means. Nope, not trick-or-treaters, not Halloween, but leaf season. Don't you love leaf season? Today I want to talk to you about an easier solution to that onerous task. Don't rake your leaves. Grind them up. This means running over them with a lawnmower many, many, many times until they are chopped very fine. So here's the results of our own mowing of our own leaves here at Brookside Gardens. It's not neat and tidy, perhaps, but these leaves have been run over by a lawnmower a couple of times and chopped, and by next spring, they'll be totally invisible. This will nourish the turf, cutting down on the use of fertilizers, and it will mean you don't have to pick anything up, put it at the curb, have it picked up, and most of all, it cuts down on your labor. It does mean that you have to mow several times over the season to chop them up, but you will find that you won't even see these by spring. This is one, just one of the many green practices 
that we are implementing here at Brookside Gardens. Well, that does it for this edition of County Report this week. Remember, we want to hear from you, and we invite you to join the opinion forum at engage.montgomerycountymd.gov. We also want you to like us on Facebook. Join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for watching.